All right, let's go. BJJ Rachel. No? Recording in progress. Can you hear me, Steph? Good? Yes, sir, I can. What, uh, what's the feeling like, obviously, losing a third straight one at home? What, what's the feeling like for this one? Uh, I mean, obviously, it's not a good feeling. Everybody wants to win. Uh, we play a great team, and, um, you know, we just got to come out and uh, prepare for the next one. Uh, it's football. Uh, things happen. And so, you know, obviously, it's not a great feeling, but, uh, you know, it's life. What, what, what kind of went wrong tonight? Uh, I mean, we go, we're going to go in and really uh, see the mom and watch film or, or uh, Monday when we watch film. But uh, like I said, we had some self-inflicted wounds, but, you know, uh, we just got to clean some stuff up. Uh, and get back rolling. How, how do you do that at this point? How, you know, three and four, and obviously the division, you know, you're looking at the standings now to a couple teams. I mean, how, how do you try to turn this thing around and get it rolling again, like you said? I mean, like I said, football, you know, it's football, it's life. Like, anything can happen. We have a bye week coming in. So, you know, just work hard this bye week. And, uh, you know, just keep playing, keep grinding. You know, we love the process and, you know, try to just stay focused on the process of getting better. And final one for me, I mean, when Air Force is holding the ball for so long like they are and you don't get as many possessions, I mean, how important is it to take advantage of your possessions and score on offense? And a couple of those drives where you guys had to punt, I mean, it, you start playing from behind. How hard is it to come back against a team like that? I mean, yeah, we knew that coming in, that they would hold the ball, um, just how their offense is ran, how it's been ran. So we knew it was important to uh, try to make the most of our opportunities. And like I said, we had some self-inflicted wounds that, you know, we're just going to go back and fix. Uh and of course, of you know, this week and in our bye week as well. And but yeah, it, it is important to uh, to make the most of those opportunities, especially with a team like that. You know, that hosts the ball, and runs the timeout, and we kind of knew that. So, you know, just some stuff to clean up, like I said. Thank you, Steph. I know you're still kind of reflecting. I mean, the, the game just ended, but it seems at times this year the offense looks good, and then it just goes dry for a little while. What? What is there any like a common thread there that? Uh, seems to hold you guys up at times? Um, it's just the small things. Um, you know, uh, we just had a few, like, you know, holding penalties or something. You know, just stuff like that that we just got to clean up. And uh, like I said, you just, like you said, you know, the game just in it, so it's not much I really know off the top of my head. But when we watch the film, you know, we see just some things that, you know, to fix, that we could fix and, you know, make better for us to be a better team and be more productive uh, more consistently. This, this feeling is going to sit with you guys for a little bit as you go into the bye. How, how do you guys approach the bye? You said you're going to be watching film on Monday. I mean, a couple of days away, or how do you approach the bye? I mean, you know, it's football. We've been playing football, or I've been playing football my whole life. Uh, you know, like people say, you know, the sun's going to come up tomorrow. Um, it's, it, it is going to hurt. You know, nobody likes uh, losing. But, you know, we kind of just move on. We, we grind. And we focus on the process, you know, of getting better and uh, trying to keep going with this season. What was going through your mind when Riley gets that onside kick? Uh, I mean, I I was uh, uh, excited and, you know, happy, you know, just ready to get another uh, opportunity going, you know, make a play, try to tie the thing up. Steph, appreciate it, man. Yes, sir. For those of us, uh, you know, that are outside the program, we don't always know, um, you know, who's going to be in there before the game. So did you know that you, know, you were going to have seven players out going into this game and were you able to prepare for it all week or was it kind of you were hoping maybe you'd get like Cyrus or George back? Uh, you know, football is a physical sport, so we just always make sure we have people ready. Um, and, you know, I have trust in everybody that's on this team, so. When somebody goes down, you know, uh, we want them to come back uh, as fast as possible. But, you know, always ready to uh, – I always had a faith and a trust in the next person coming up. You know, how much do you think the shuffling on the offensive line and the injuries have affected, you know, kind of the consistency of the offense this season? Obviously, we saw towards the end there that Will Ferrell went down and Dante Harrington had to come back in at center. So how much is that shuffling kind of affecting the, the consistency of the offense? Uh, I don't think um, shuffling is kind of is, – uh, messing up any consistency. Like I said, I have uh, the trust in all my players. Uh, so when Dante went in, I didn't even, you know, I just played the game normally. I didn't, you know, uh, he's a great player. And anybody else that comes in, I, I have trust in them. I think they're a great player. So I don't think it really, that really has anything to do with the consistency or anything like that. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, Steph, appreciate the time. Thanks very much.
Thank you. Recording stopped. You got us, Andy? Yep, you got me. Recording in progress. All right, let's go Ron, BJ, Jay. Okay, Rachel, Rachel. Ooh, I got to start out first tonight. Uh, uh, last question I asked Steph was, uh, you know, how much was the shuffling of the offensive line uh, affecting the consistency of this offense? Obviously, we saw Will Farrow go down at the end there at center, and Dante had to jump in. Um, just seems like, the, you know, those guys are having to shuffle around a lot, and, and maybe it's, it's affecting the team, but I don't know. Yeah, Dante had to jump in there at the end. Uh, Will caught a cramp, and so uh, he had to get in there. And obviously, uh, you know, the operation again with, with the snaps. We got to we got to work on the consistent consistency of those so that uh, Hank can work his progressions and um, stay on schedule within uh, the play and, and the route progression. Did you know going into this week for sure that you were going to have those seven guys down and, and you were playing without George and uh, Cyrus, or were you kind of hoping maybe you'd get some of them back? No, we knew they were going to be down. Andy, um, you know, three straight home losses, obviously, and just obviously you guys are in a, a tough spot right now. Uh, you know, just just what, how do you just kind of, you know, put in perspective where you guys are, are at right now at this point in the season? Yeah, there's no question. I mean, we, we don't – everyone knows what the standard is here, whether it's at home or on the road or whatever, and and – the standard is that our competitive nature and the way we play on the field is such that it gives us an opportunity to, to be successful again, whether we're at home or not at home. And we, when we don't play our best through the course of four quarters, um, a lot of which we can control, you know, there's, there was a lot of negative yardage plays. We, we got in rhythm with the triple option, but obviously, you know, it was later in the in the first half and did a much better job in the second half. Um, we needed to find a better rhythm on defense quicker. Uh, we gave us some plays on the perimeter where they were stretching the field on us. And we obviously, as coaches, can do a better job of getting the guys in rhythm and make, making sure they're ready to handle that stuff. On the uh, fourth and two that you guys went for there down near the goal line, it looked like you only had 10 players on the field. Is, do you, yep, you can count to 10. There was only 10. What I mean, how, how does that happen in that spot? Yeah, there's no question. Uh, that's a, a critical error in, the, in that situation. And so, again, that's my fault. And uh, I've got to make sure that there's 11 guys that run on the field. Thank you. Jay, it's you. You know, Andy, I know that with the offensive of time looks at times looks good. And then at other times, it seems like it's, it's kind of a reoccurring trend where it just goes dry for a little while. Is, is there, was there a common thread with what happened tonight with, with what's happened in past games with the offense too? We definitely, you know, Jay, we hit a spell tonight where we weren't operating. And again, uh, yes, are we playing a good defense tonight? We are playing a good defense tonight. But a lot of it has to do with us and our operation and eliminating penalties, eliminating negative yardage plays, it's very difficult from to play from behind the chains um, and get uh, you know the the other team off schedule when we're when we are consistently putting ourselves behind the chains. So we've shown what we can do when we operate and stay on schedule, and obviously when we don't do that, we we fall into these lulls. Andy, uh, obviously this one's going to stick around for a little bit with you guys because you go into the bye now. How do how do you guys approach the bye? You know, the same way we were, you know, if it would have went the other way, there's a lot of things that we got to continue to improve on. There's a lot of guys we've got to get healthy and there's a lot of things that we obviously have to do a much better job of consistently. So we don't have these lulls that we're talking about, um, you know, when, and really it's not it's within special teams as well. We talk about changing the game on special teams and we didn't we did not do that today. We had some opportunities and um, we didn't execute. And one of them was in a critical situation late in the game when we got a, a stop on defense and we were getting the ball back for the offense. And, uh, um, you know, we did, we did not do a good job making sure that our players understand the situations and how to handle those situations. One more for me, Andy. Um, I know there's probably a few people that want to see, you know, Boise State football succeed more than you do. You played there, you coached here, all of that. Uh, 
simply put, after a run like this, how, how are you doing? Well, I mean, I, just, I want for our players more than anything to be able to learn how to commit and be consistent with their preparation. And that starts with us and teaching them and making sure that we are our best. If, if we are and we, we handle things properly, we're not late to meetings and stuff during the week then maybe we have better consistency throughout the course of the week. And for us, more than anything, those are the things that you learn when you come to Boise State. Those are the things that we're trying, we're working to reestablish here, that all those little things become big things. And, and for me, more than anything, um, I know in due time, we reestablish this foundation and we get back to doing things more consistently than, um, you know, the outcomes that, that we want will come. Did you have some players that relate to meetings? We're moving on, Jay. Okay. All right, John, to wrap it up. Hey, Andy, uh, it looked like the last week, you know, a lot of the running game issues had been solved. But, uh, you know, this week, it just – a lot of the issues came back. Uh, you know, all four of your losses, you guys have had under 100 yards rushing. You know, what do you guys have to do to kind of make that more consistent? Yeah, there's there's no doubt. Um, number one, we got we got to commit to it and uh, let the guys uh, go get it up front. Um, they've they've done a better job in the past couple weeks. Um, you know, we are down a few backs as well, so um, the the consistency again that goes along with that. I think uh, I think we've made tremendous progress up front, but we're we're nowhere where we need to be, and that's where we've got to continue to grow over this bye week. You know, you say, you know, next man up, and I know you've I've heard, used that term quite a bit, but when you're losing your top two running backs, how much does that hurt? Yeah, I mean, those, you know, Andrew Van Buren's done a really good job for us. You know, um, he's been a situational back for us. Um, and, the, and the not having George and Cyrus, you know, is a big deal. Andrew, Andrew again, has done a tremendous job for us. Um, but those guys are able to do more within the offense in the past game and things like that. And so, um, you know, we we got to we got to work to commit ourselves to the run game and stick to it and let the offensive line. Um, a big part of the run game is is not always just about how many yards you get, but it's about working on the defense and and, and working to wear the defense out. Where do you guys think you are in terms of that and just working the defense? Yeah, we got uh, that's what we're we got a bye week coming here and we've got to continue to grow in that area. All right, sounds good. Thanks a lot, Andy. We're not where we want to be. Thanks a lot, Andy. Thank you. Thanks for the time, Coach. Appreciate it. Recording stopped. Thanks, Andy.
Scott, you got us okay? We, uh, yes, can you hear me? Hear me? Yeah, on we, we got you. We got you. All right. Let's go, uh, BJ, Ron, and Jay. Thank you. Recording in progress. Scott, uh, obviously not a good feeling, I'm sure. What were kind of the emotions after losing this one? Uh, yeah, frustrated, disappointed, angry. I'm sure you could name them all, you know. Uh, that's not what we wanted to do. And uh, obviously we, you know, they played better than we did. And, uh, you know, we lost the football game. And uh, that's what it comes down to. You know, we have to be more uh, disciplined and more detailed and focus on those details. And we just got to compete, you know. So we're very uh, disappointed because we know that's not who we are. Nor is that the standard here at Boise State. And uh, but we will continue to strive to get better every day and um, uphold that standard with a relentless drive. And we will not uh, we will not uh, let up. Did you feel pretty good about the adjustments you guys made in the second half defensively? I mean, you guys you were able to uh, force some more punts and stuff and, and give you guys a chance. Yeah, I thought we did a good job um, in the second half adjusting to kind of what they were doing offensively. You know, we settled in and just uh, played aggressively and we're flying around and uh, we're making plays. So we did a good job there in the second half. And final one for me, I mean, it just seemed like, I think, uh, you know, uh, Steph Cobb called himself inflicted wounds, just some of the, penalties, some of the uh, you know, whether it be drop passes, some of the other things, the punt that bounced up and hit you guys. I mean, we're just, just, just not things we're used to seeing from a Boise state team. How, how do you kind of look at that? Yeah, you know, he did it, you know, he hit it kind of right on the head, you know, it was self-inflicted. Um, <clears throat> we, you know, made way too many mistakes and uh, we're going to learn from it and we'll bounce back and we'll make sure not to make those same mistakes again. And uh, we just got to keep getting better every day, focus on what we can control and uh, just keep moving, keep moving forward. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. So, Scott, uh, obviously this triple option offense is a tough one to deal with, but uh, they, they rack up 300-plus rushing yards today. You know, what What wasn't working for you guys on the defensive side of the ball in that aspect? Yeah, you know, obviously it's they run the ball, like, all the time. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's very uh, calculated what they do. They're very good at it. They're very good at attacking attacking um, certain defensive calls and – and formations and whatnot and what we're lined up in. And uh, we kind of dialed in there uh, later in the game and uh, they did a good job, you know, just keep, uh, keep pounding it. They are obviously very uh, disciplined. They're very uh, hard working and they don't give up. And obviously um, they did a good job tonight. Uh, we got to continue to get better and clean up uh, our mistakes. The third quarter has been such an issue for you guys this year. Uh, you guys come out and you get a three and out on their first stop, on, on their first drive in the third quarter. Uh, but then the, the offense goes three and out. I mean, it was, how was that for you guys on the defensive side? Is that, is that kind of deflating for you guys? Um, I mean, this is a team game. You know, we got to play to play together. You know, we did a good job hold, holding them, and uh, their defense did a good job holding us. You know, so, you know, so it, it goes both ways sometimes. We just got to continue to – uh, do our job and get them into, you know, and get them off the field and continue to get our offense the ball because um, our offense will put up points. Um, they will go down the field and score. I believe that. We all believe in it. And uh, so we just got to keep, keep doing our job. And twice now this season we've seen Ahmed Hassan on the field. And as soon as he gets on the field, he makes a play. I mean, what, what is it about him that makes him such an impact player? Yeah, I know he's done a good job stepping up with injuries and, you know, learning the plays, um, learning the techniques and all that. Uh, just He just gives great effort. He has a, an unbelievable motor, um, always goes hard, um, works and works really hard in practice. And uh, he just, you know, plays – he plays fast. He's physical. He's strong. He's explosive. And, you know, he has a bright, uh, a bright future here at Boise State. Thanks, dude. Hey, you. Scott, we've heard Andy, you know, kind of talk a number of times about uh, being consistent and thorough in, in you know, you guys' preparation and uh, week in and week out, it's it's always got to be all in and, and whatnot. I'm just curious, as a player, what are you what are you seeing with that, and maybe how how can you guys be better? 
yeah, you know, we got to, you know, how we prepare, you know, throughout the week is crucial. And that goes for anything in life, you know, obviously, you know, we're all students as well. If we don't prepare for a test, I mean, well, you probably won't do well on the test. Right. So we just got to continue to do a good job preparing, be diligent, uh, focus on the little details, doing what we need to do when, when we get here, um, having an urgency about us being focused, having that discipline and taking and handling our business off the field as well. You know, there, there's so many uh, factors and, and whatnot that play into it, but we, we had, we have done a good job preparing throughout weeks and we've done a not so good job preparing throughout some weeks. So we've been on both sides of the fence of that today or this season, excuse me. And uh, so we just got to keep doing a better job of focusing on our mission, being diligent um, throughout the week and making sure that we're as prepared as we can be. As a guy, as a guy that seems to do it pretty right most of the time yourself, how do you, how do you approach the buy? You know, this is a good opportunity for us to take a step back and look at what, what we need to correct, what we need to adjust and, uh, you know, really just focus on ourselves and fix those little things, create a good mentality on the team and, a right mindset of what we need to accomplish throughout the rest of the season as we kind of reach the halfway mark. Uh, so this is a good opportunity for us to uh, take that next step. Scott, how do you guys not let the uh, the burden of the expectations constantly on this program, you know, get in the way of, of salvaging the second half of the season? Because obviously four losses, I mean, that just doesn't happen here. So how, how do you, how do you get through that? Yeah. You know, it's, um, you know, it's tough, you know, uh, obviously that is not the standard at Boise state. It never has been. Obviously we've been playing, we play great teams, uh, very good discipline. And, um, we've been in some tight games and we've had plenty of opportunities to win these games, you know, so you can look at it both ways of, you know, we have, you know, we only lost by this amount, this amount, whatever, or, you know, but we can also look at it as we made this mistake here, that mistake there. So, you know, it all comes down to how we play. And I, and that's really true. You know, how we play determines, you know, our success. And we're very, there's so much potential on this team. We've seen it obviously. And uh, we just got to continue to, you know, trust the process um, preparing with that purpose, you know, having just being a disciplined team, you know, a tough team and also, you know, respecting, you know, the traditions here at Boise state and, and upholding that standard that was uh, paved, paved before us. Scott, thank you, man. Thank you. Scott, thanks very much. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Thanks, Recording Scott. stopped. Okay. <laughs>